Welcome everyone, Grand Gnosis Master, Dr. Thor Templar here, and we're going to take you through another fascinating look into the real world, truth, instead of the illusion you're living in. Now, what I want to cover right now is, um, <clears throat> everyone does this to a large degree in terms of falling into the trap that for some reason common science has anything to offer us whatsoever. <clears throat> It is common science that needs to come to the occult sciences to learn, not vice versa. Uh, the occult scientists are the original scientists. We invented everything. It was all the occultists to form the basic understanding of primitive science and um, <clears throat> what is now based on 500-year-old uh, Newtonian understanding, uh, who by himself, um, Newton was a... Um, a person who wrote books on alchemy and everything else. It was much more expansive than the little uh, box that all the common scientists live in today. Um, also, the typical very strange mix that we get from all these schmientists uh, from the past to the present with their influences by uh, religion and everything else. Newton uh, was... and. The college system set up in England in particular was based on the monastery system of the Catholic Church. <clears throat> it was all men, it was all, they were not um, able to marry, etc., as Newton didn't. And of course, this generates all sorts of problems and most likely uh, complicates and uh, further clouds his thinking uh, by not having a normal life, a normal, I mean, you don't have a normal sex life. What, what kind of perceptions are you going to have? Uh, so the whole idea is that, uh, and most likely, it breeds abnormal sexuality and probably, even though it is not known, Newton most likely was homosexual, as so many um, Brits in their particular system have set up from being pushed together as children and then past that, even though amusingly um, homosexuality was outlawed in the UK until 1969, uh, which uh, is uh, beyond even comprehending considering um, the understanding of the huge homosexual population and the attitudes within the UK that foster that. So the whole idea is that um, these kind of bizarre thinkings uh, mixed in with alchemy, uh, which is certainly very occult science, uh, mixed in with goofball religion, uh, mixed in with uh, um, a, a, a no-sex life, <laughs> um, is uh, just, uh, wow, what can we say about that? So they're writing books on alchemy, on religion, on everything else, and uh, this is part of the little game that was played. So this is really where your foundations come from, and it's very, very um, uh, shocking uh, that you think you can get any kind of decent uh, uh, work done or understandings achieved with those kind of poor uh, backgrounds. And, you know, the same thing is today, and there's, um, as usual, where everyone has a very fantasy reality of what regular science is in general. And that scientists are something special and teachers are something special. Um, the kind of inane glorification of these very weak and uh, oftentimes disturbed people uh, is uh, another problem with society by giving too much credit to anyone who walks around with some sort of... Uh, um, appointed authority because they did something within a school structure uh, and then graduated and we're supposed to give them value to this when these are nothing more than brainwashing institutions that you do what they tell you you pass their text or a preconceived already written in stone ideas and then they say oh you're one of our brainwashed fellows here's a certificate but um, as the entire world of science is coming around to fully understand uh, occult science as the reality of how things work, which is otherwise known as quantum physics, uh, where there's an actual, um, you could say, um, there's a telepathic communication between everything on the planet. Um, this has been proven 100% with quantum physics, which now everything is based on in science. Why? 
is it the new theory? Well, first of all, a lot of people um, think that quantum physics is something relatively new, uh, that uh, this came after Einstein uh, did his stuff, and uh, this is something, oh, it's absurd. Well, there was a big controversy between Einstein and Max Bohr, who was the uh, talking about quantum physics as the way things really work in the universe. So this is nothing new. Quantum physics uh, goes back uh, prior, actually, to Einstein's um, theory of relativity and matter and everything else, uh, which has been proven to be 100% wrong. And of course, you know, he spent his entire life trying to prove something that was a lie. And then, of course, in later life, well, you get trapped into that. And I've talked about this before, is that, you know, you get trapped into defending your position because you're not seeking truth, you're seeking personal ego gratification. And science should always be looked at as, well, yeah, we thought it was like that. We had a lot of good discussions about it, but it's not like that anymore. We have to move on to truth. But nobody seeks truth. Everybody seeks to fill their own pockets, get their ego gratification, get their next job at their college. So nobody is seeking that. And as long as we don't seek truth, we will continue to have these kind of problems. And this is a major problem in life in general. So there is never really that aspect. So as long as you have people that are doing things strictly for ego monetary benefit, which is all tied in, people don't understand the big game in science. And the big game in science is you get recognized. It's a almost movie star-like uh, system that science has. And you write your little papers and uh, you get well known. And this is all about patting each other on the back, going to your little conferences and talking about uh, how everybody uh, pats you on the back. And of course, if you think that things are being tried out by one scientist after another to prove or disprove what you're doing, this is an, a complete and total fallacy. You're not going to spend your life um, doing experiments so you can make someone else uh, get the benefit because they are right. It just doesn't work like that. Um, scientists are constantly arguing, fighting among themselves, trying to get ahead, trying to get published. I mean, everyone ignores this, like these stupid uh, dumb bunkers and skeptics you know, who want to take everything at face value. Of course nobody lied. Of course you're not getting disinformation. This is a fax. It came from the government. It came from science. So it's a fact. How ridiculous uh, is that? But this is the kind of imbecilic lies that uh, these people live in, particularly skeptics and debunkers who take everything at face value. And of course, nothing could possibly be done for money or, um, or for personal ego benefit. Um, no, no, that could possibly. Why would you possibly do that? Because we all work like uh, perfect moral people. Um, and that's how uh, the world works. I mean, this kind of stupidity is just um, unbelievably, um, I'm not sure what you call it. It's more than just naive. It's imbecilic. And just like I've never met a smart um, uh, religious person, I've never met uh, smart people in any of these fields uh, when you get into it and you start talking about these. The fact that someone knows some sort of pre-designed uh, conclusion and you've been trained into it uh, doesn't uh, hold much water with me. Now, quantum physics can be um, explained in many different ways. And of course, it's been proven even by the most primitive of all occultists, which you could call basic witchcraft. Uh, a witch will take a doll, a poppet. Uh, they'll take a hair from the person they want to affect. They combine it in with the doll. They send particular energies and that person is affected by it. That's quantum physics. The whole idea is you're connected to the person because you have a hair of theirs. That hair is connected to that person and they're communicating with each other on a telepathic, uh, energetic communication level. They're sending information back and forth. So if you want to establish a connection to that person, well, you have it by having something of theirs. Uh, so uh, by doing that, you've established a connection of energy and then you send through that connection just like a telephone call, you can send, uh, you can talk to somebody about anything you want, good things, bad things, whatever. That is quantum physics. 
no matter where that person is in the universe. So if you have a hair from that person and you're living in uh, Australia and you live in Canada, well, you're still affecting that person based on the understandings of true occult science, otherwise now stolen and called quantum physics. Now, science will never admit any of this. They're stuck in their own dogmas, their own uh, little... Uh, control factors. You've got to remember they have other people in their um, uh, uh, research areas, but you've got to remember this pressure isn't just other, quote, scientists who are probably idiots um, who can't even figure out how to tie their shoes, but come up with these fantasy numbers. You know, I'm always amused at the very occult looking uh, way that things are written about in advanced uh, mathematics and physics, which is all based on uh, square means this, two slash here means that. It's amazing how this is just a complete and total contrived way of trying to figure things out and somehow piece together they claim makes sense. Well, science has failed us, it's been failing us, and will continue to fail us until they grasp uh, the bigger reality of life. Now, there are some scientists that do this, and um, these um, Sheldrake and other ones who, um, uh, Russell Targ, um, put off, these are all people that are real scientists. They come from a very uh, educated backgrounds from traditional schools. Yet when they go on different talk sh uh, places like the medium uh, for talking called TED, where they have lectures and they put different scientists and other ones up. But let's make sure they don't just put scientists. They have movie producers, actors, and all sorts of people. This isn't a hardcore um, scientific medium, but they denied these alternative thinkers their uh, podium there. Pretty, pretty disgusting. Does that just prove what I've told everybody? They're not open to truth. They're not opening things up for discussion and for thought and for interest, which is what science is supposed to be all about, because there really is no science. Science is designed to be changing consistently. Skepticism is not part of science. Uh, in any way whatsoever. You don't believe in anything. A skeptic believes in something else to the point of stopping any new thoughts from coming. That's what a skeptic is all about. It's just stupid caveman thinking that you will make sure you take your rocks out and beat someone on the head to make sure that they never change past the caveman life that you are living in because it doesn't make any sense based on your outdated uh, understandings of reality. You're not seeking... Uh, uh, truth. And these people, uh, the, the bottom line to all these people is they are being paid and controlled by others. Now, science is something where you produce results for a particular desire or you don't get funding for it. Uh, people don't understand how college systems are funded. They're funded by corporations that go in there and say, I want X results. The peanut commission goes in there and I want you to find out a thousand wonderful ways to use peanuts. Um, you don't go in there and say, well, you know, peanuts are kind of toxic here. They got this fungus on them, which basically it is, by the way. I mean, peanuts, which are a uh, root, a lugum, um, uh, have a very serious problem, as a lot of nuts do, with a terribly toxic fungus, which a lot of people, if they ingest, will die. It closes your air passages off, and when you can't breathe, generally death is what comes next. So the whole idea is that um, they don't want to hear any of that. They don't want you studying how to reverse that. They want you to tell the public how wonderful it is. Oh, it's packed with protein and oils and other things and extremely high in fat and calories um, that go with it. So you either come up with that or, hey, I'm pulling your funding. What did I tell you to do? So it's not really what the facts are. It's what these people want to be told. And this is how all research works. People aren't doing research out there uh, just off the cuff. They are being paid by somebody. Uh, so when you hear about the latest breakthrough in tomatoes or coffee or other things, well, where did that money come from? Did they just decide to study coffee? Well, most likely they have a grant from the coffee uh, society or association or whatever. So... Uh, there's nothing about science that is scientific. It's all skewed like everything else in life. They're not seeking truth. They're seeking convenient answers. So, 
as we move through this, we need to understand how corrupt and backward science is and how science has not done anything for us. We don't have a single situation in our life uh, that science has handled. We do not have cures for diseases. We do not have a free energy, just to name two. But basically, what has science done? What, we have plastics? You know, and all these things are not even all that evolved uh, with uh, any of these things. Most of the items that are even built today, which are based on scientific principles and uh, that go into a lot of these things, <clears throat> don't work or they work poorly. Uh, the amount of time people spend on computers and other things, getting them to work properly and the crappy um, programs that are put out there. So, I mean, all these things, we go on and on and on <clears throat> of how we've been let down. But we've been horribly let down as a species that uh, are the main purpose or the way that we work as a physical entity is this much higher consciousness, mind, other levels. Now, even if we get into the more primitive mind-brain stuff that scientists believe in, um, we still know very little about that. And very little research is done in that area because nobody gives a damn. Why do we want to make smarter, better people? That doesn't put any money in our pocket. If you don't need us or can't use a tool or we can't stick a machine in your head that we can control and charge you for, well, we're not interested in it. So you need to understand that, you know, science, this is what science is all about. It's not out there seeking truth and out there to help mankind. Um, and the scientists also make sure that they put a price tag on there that's enormous, like the greedy scum bucket doctors that bleed you for every penny they can in a life crisis because they know what are you going to do? You either pay or die, but you die anyway. You just die with a bigger debt and they get uh, nice fancy cars and other things. Um, so the whole idea is that <clears throat> this is all the con game that is given to you. Until science comes and actually embraces the occult sciences and fully understands that these kind of principles are, are what has been running the universe and continues to run the universe, uh, then they are adversarial in their particular position. Nobody is looking for free thought or looking for truth, and everyone needs to understand that. Nobody is looking for anything that actually uh, produces results. They're based in how to make money or how to steal money out of your pocket. Everything is convenient. Everything is uh, is corrupt. And as such, there are no answers from them. So we don't need to go to science and have them verify if anything occultism has any benefit or not. They need to come to us to have us figure out and correct their mess that they've created in their uh, bullshit schools of stupidity producing one crappy thing after another and uh, not standing up for anything of value. Uh, ridiculous things come out like, I wonder how much time and money was spent on figuring out whether Pluto was a planet or not. Now uh, it's thought that it's not a planet. Frankly, who cares? Secondly, people spent time on that? Was it Neil deGrasse Tyson? This is what he's known for? Uh, this is absurd. Uh, who cares? And we can't tell anyway because of the very poor um, uh, system of being able to see so far away. We don't have enough space telescopes, which we should have hundreds being built right now and being shot into space so we can just see everything. And then we can figure. What they don't say is all the presumptions by science and all the things they thought were the case. Now that we get space telescopes in different areas, are disproving everything that they really said in the past. This is another cover-up by Schmiantis. They were wrong. They continue to be wrong. Of course, they don't want to admit that. This is all part of the bigger cover-up, which is just proven the fact that everything that they ever do is lies. It's nothing more than assumptions, guesses, while they may be, quote, educated guesses, but, you know, educated guesses from an uneducated group of people. So, uh, unless we fully understand 
um, what is happening in this world and disconnect from it. We don't need them to verify anything that we do as a cultist. We are in the front lines every day. What we do manifests and achieves things. Uh, we get results and that's all that counts. We don't need them to come and say this energy is there or that when they don't understand it whatsoever. They uh, are making uh, judgments or not doing anything, which is the case, uh, based on having no information and no study involved in it because there isn't any direct payoff for it. Just like the cure for cancer is not very sought after because there's no money if you cure cancer in it, or I should say a limited amount. So you come up with a pill or other things, you've eliminated cancer, you've eliminated all the treatments. Um, what happens? Well, there's money is decreased, not increased. Why would you possibly do that when the entire planet is based on that? And these are the scientists that are involved in this entire process and are intimately involved suppressing any type of breakthroughs. How can they live with themselves? They actually create diseases and other things and produce products that do absolutely nothing. You think this is being created by the average guy? Do you think the average guy, oh, I graduated from Middale High School. I'm running the uh, drug division of Pfeiffer. Uh, yeah, Gate Daub, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's who's there? No. You'll find heavily degreed people that are running these medical divisions that are being paying high sums of money that are deliberately manufacturing toxic, horrible drugs so they can produce another drug to fix the drug problems that they have. Or just in general, they're certainly not looking to cure anything. They're looking to create more and more problems. A problem needs an answer, doesn't it? And that's another pill. So as we go through this, which is not just another pill, that's another billion dollars in the pocket of these companies, which have been caught on many occasions. You know, the drug companies, and they always do this. This is part of the disinformation way of doing things. They were proven in court that antidepressants were totally, completely fake. They don't work. They don't do anything. They sold $6 billion worth of these. This conclusion, the drug companies came out and said, yeah, you're right, man. No, we did it. It was just a scam. And the court said, well, bad boy. And sued them, I believe, $2 billion, leaving them with a profit of $4 billion. Well, that don't sound like bad money to me. I'll take the $4 billion, and this is how the game works. The same thing happened with all this uh, recent um, banking system collapsed, is that... Um, these people were found guilty and they were fined approximately two weeks worth of income after they destroyed the entire system and millions, hundreds of millions of people lost their homes and all the other things that happened. They were basically fined. Oh, well, we found them guilty though. You know, we took them to court. This is how they, the game works. Uh, and they were fined a, I don't even know if you can call that a slap on the wrist. A lot of people made money from that, particularly attorneys and other things that got involved in these cases. So it all turns out to be a bunch of nonsense. And um, uh, what happens is that people do these criminal acts, uh, they're found guilty, and they get slaps on the wrist instead of being thrown into prison and having fines that are triple whatever income they may have made. So if uh, you made uh, five or six billion dollars on a drug that was totally false. Well, first of all, there should be criminal charges about the people running that company, and you should probably be fined 20 to 50 billion dollars. So the fact that you have to pay more than uh, quite a bit more so that you won't do that in the future, plain and simple. So, but none of that actually happens. Now, we can blame, oh, it's politics. It's the po no, it's the individual person that allows this to happen. It's the scientists who go along with this, uh, who don't stand together to go against this kind of horrible corruption. And this is in every phase of life, so that's why nothing ever changes. So, there's nothing for them to verify with their screwed up world that can't produce free energy, that can't produce any cures, that can't extend uh, life to any great extent, um, that is all based on an evil, corrupt, money-based society thrown in with their sick, perverted comic book religions. We don't need any of these goofballs. And anyone who's ever known these, quote, academics and other ones knows the kind of 
kind of freaky, odd people they are and how they really can't do anything in life in general. And God forbid their car doesn't start because they're going to go into a panic because they don't know how to do anything. Um, this is uh, a sad but true fact in the world. So why should we possibly go to these people and ask for their help or verification with anything? We need to come to us to verify what they're doing makes any sense whatsoever. And it's based all on their uh, complicated process, you know, like medicine and law where they use uh, dead language terms, otherwise known as Latin, to confuse people further so that the game is more theirs. Uh, they play this game when ultimately I don't care about your jive talking nonsense with your funny little squiggles uh, on a board and how you can explain to me how the essence of the universe works when when it comes down to it, you can't even cure acne. We don't need you and we need to stay away from that. You'd work in your life, you get properly trained by a proper organization like IGOS and you take your knowledge and you build your life and you go from there. You don't need verification from anybody, certainly a bunch of buffoonish idiots that don't know anything uh, in general and have proven they don't by where are the changes? It's about time we stop supporting failure and start supporting people who are successful. If you fail and you have billions after billions given to you, cancer research boobs, you don't get research money anymore. Stop supporting these people with their stupid dreams. As they told Jerry Lewis about muscular dystrophy, we're going to have a cure within your lifetime, Jerry. Well, Jerry Lewis lived to be 92, I believe, or somewhere in that area. No cure. No cure whatsoever. Of course, he paid them hundreds of millions of dollars for their no cures. That's what you get when you follow regular common schmientists. Look out, people. Until next time.